All right, perfect. So, hey, guys, listen, I want to go ahead and cover the topic of how to cold email 40 client, 40,000 clients per month. Now, a lot of people are going, dude, 40,000 customers per month. That's a lot. That's a lot. But the truth is this is um, you have to understand volume is a key to success. It's a numbers game. Success is a numbers game. And if you're not producing high numbers, you're not putting out high numbers, then your odds of staying in business and succeeding in business is honestly slim, slim to none. So what inspired me to make this video was what was I was watching a training video, um, getting trained myself on how to obviously grow my business. Right. And someone was he was talking about cold calling and how he was cold calling to pitch his product, to pitch his service. And, you know, he's like, should I use Facebook groups? Should I share this group? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? Listen, it's up to you however you want to grow your business. But in my personal experience, I personally love cold email. And I have a virtual assistant agency and we do a lot of cold calling for our customers. We'll do a lot of cold calling for our clients. But um, while we have that cold calling division, we still also have a cold emailing division as well. Okay. So now how to code, code email 40,000 customers per month. Okay. Successfully and safely. I'm going to just stick around. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and, and share those tips in this training video. So the best understanding this training, let's talk about cold email, right? What is it? What is cold email? Cold email is basically, you know, Hey, you know, I send you my offer. I email you to your email. I send an email to your inbox and it's like, Hey, listen, my name is Emmanuel. We do virtual assistant services, you know, uh, this is the common pay points we've seen with insurance agents like you, and we want to go ahead and see if you know hiring a virtual assistant might be something that's be beneficial for your business, right? That's basically what cold email is. It's like you're just call calling somebody that literally didn't wasn't really looking for your product, and you're just trying to offer them you know a solution to it. Uh, everyone does it. Everyone cold emails, cold calls. There's a lot to do with the cold text. We don't do any cold texting, zero. Um, but we do do cold email for the most part. Our clients, on the other hand, some of them do do cold texting. They do, but for our personal business, we just don't do cold texting. Even though if we did cold texting, we would have a higher opt-in rate and a higher appointment show ratio. I'm still like, no, I just like email. Okay. So what is it? Should you or should you not be doing it? Right. So another thing is, should you or should you not be cold emailing? To see success in cold email, you have to know who your audience is first. Okay. That's very important. You have to know who you're trying to sell to. Like, is my audience, like, for instance, our audience is insurance agents. Let's say your audience is, you know, um, HVAC or your audience is business credit. Let's say you're doing business credit, right? Business credit repair. And you want to repair credit, you know, the businesses of your local area, the credit of the businesses in your local area, right? You have to know what is the common pain. What are the common pain points? The common objections that uh, they they like they 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 have. Know the dislikes and your pain points, so you can understand why your offer is of importance to them. It's very important to understand how your offer can be of importance to them, especially especially you know um, when you're going to be doing cold email, right? Because you have to understand is to um you volume is key, but the offer is the secret sauce, right? So you need to understand the offer. And it's it, and it's like it's like me not understanding anything about business credit repair and then me going ahead and emailing business credit repair uh, um, businesses and talking about how I can grow your business, but I don't know your business. I mean, that on its own is like the quickest and easiest way to lose credibility, right? So that's the reason why you want to know your audience. You want to know what they like. You want to know what they dislike. You want to know what are the pain points, what are the solutions that they've tried in the past, because that's the only way you can understand how you can best be able to help them, how you can best be able to be of service to them, right? Now, once you understand your audience, you need to craft your message, right? You need to craft the message as far as uh, this is where pretty much copywriting comes in. Once I know, let's say I'm targeting business credit repair, I know that a common focus, common areas that they struggle with is A, B, C. That I know that, hey, listen, if I go ahead and I, I, um, you know, um, this is the pain points to target, this is the areas in which you target, I can go ahead and understand and I can go ahead and craft the best message for them, right? So copywriting comes in. Now, if you're unfamiliar with copy with, with writing copy, here are a few things you can do is spend the next 30 days reading cold email copies and writing writing cold email copies. That's what I did. Okay. I spent more than 30 days, right? I would I would read other people's templates. I went on hunter.io. I read, you know, you know, very and I still do. I still read other people's emails. 100 percent I go on my cold email, I look at the cold emails, I look at everything that is that you're doing. I study the email, the 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 emails. I know, okay, this is the offer. This is where they targeted the pay port. Why did they use the CTA? Why did they not use the CTA? Right? I devote 30 minutes every morning to read cold emails and write cold emails. I've been doing this for months now. Okay. And 
that's what I do for my ads. I devote 30 minutes uh, to either work on Facebook ads or work on Google ads. And then I write the copy and I do the design for it. Same thing for the email. I write the sequences. Every part of my life gets uh, part of the marketing side of my business gets 30 minutes devoted to them. Okay. Uh, same way I devote an hour every day to making and editing these videos for you so I can post content on a daily, keyword, daily basis. Okay. Uh, that might change in the future, but for now, that's pretty much what's going on. Uh, you can use AI to write your copy, but in personal experience, AI doesn't give me the, per the same emotional connection with my customer as to when I write this email. So artificial intelligence does not give me the same connection as far as if I were to write the email. So I prefer, much better prefer to write the emails myself than have AI because the thing is artificial intelligence will use you know, data from what it's seen in the past, but it does not know your customers as more, as, as, as in depth and as intimate and as personal as you do. So whenever it is that you're using artificial intelligence to do most of the work, you just have to understand it. It's going to give you more generic stuff. You can tweak it and you can use it as far as inspiration. But I would personally say either one, Take a copywriting course. There are hundreds of free videos on YouTube and paid classes as well. Use that to learn, and then you can use AI to pretty much supplement, right? So once you have the targeting copy figured out, then you need to mine your leads. Lead mining is very important, right? Where do you get the data? Where do you get the leads from? How are you getting the people that you're going to be cold emailing, right? Where you mine the leads? Where you mine the leads is completely up to you. Where you find the data is completely up to you. Uh, there's several tools out there, like you can use Sales Navigator for LinkedIn. You can go on LinkedIn, and you can use Sales Navigator. Uh, you can use Apollo.io, um, you can use Optics.io, or license search portals. Now, I don't use Sales Navigator, Apollo, or any of those because um, from us, we realized that whenever you get a government certification or a government license, right, quote-unquote real estate, insurance, medical, whatever it is, right, your information is stored under the as a business. You are now a registered business in the government's database okay you are a registered business in the government's database which makes it completely safe and legal to email or, or call you because you are a registered business right so whenever you register your business or you get a license you register your business with the state when you register your business with the state um that's public information right so we can just based off of a google search google the database and we can find the database for insurance agents real estate agents um whatever is a they required to have a license. You can find that information on a government search database, and then you can go ahead and email that business, right? Um, that's one of the things we do because it's easier to mine the data there, and there are more than millions of insurance agents over the past 10 years who got licensed. When we emailed them, a lot of people were like, I'm not in insurance anymore, but I am in roofing now. Can this work on roofing? Or I am not in this anymore. I am in salon care. Can this work in salon care, right? He ends up still picking interest. You're still going to get the people to tell you to no F off. But ideally, those people are not going to do business with you, even if you gave them the money and said, hey, I'll pay you to do business with me. They still won't, right? So that's kind of one of the things to understand as far as lead mining goes. Once you mine your leads, you will need a cold email tool that has inbox and domain warm-up. The, really, the reason why it's important to have an inbox and domain warm-up is I want you to understand from a perspective of inboxing, Right. Whenever you're sending emails, right, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the actual Gmail providers, inbox, uh, Outlook, Zoho, whatever you use, they're actually scanning those emails to see the person sending the emails. How long? Like, for instance, let's say you're sending an email from not a Gmail account, but from a domain. Right. Let's say your domain is abccompany.com. They look at your domain and say, OK, how many emails is this domain receiving on a monthly basis? how many they're sending out on a monthly basis or daily basis, whatever it may be. And they look at your history and like, ah, oh, this is a one, this is a new domain. This domain has only been around for so long. Um, they're not sending out many emails. They're not receiving, no one is replying back to the emails, which is very important is if no one is replying back to emails, like, well, why should we accept this, e e e this email and deliver it to this person's inbox? It all happens in a matter of seconds. So what you have to do is you need to, Use AI tools that email each other back and forth and say, ABC company emails this inbox, right? Because they're all in the pool of warm up. DEF company emails ABC back, and then AI is just communicating. It's all generic, but they're responding back to each other, which increases your domain authority. So once you go ahead and you send an email out to, you call the email out, it doesn't look at you and say, wait. They're sending 20,000 emails and only two people are replying. No, they're like, wait, 
they have a good credible history. The accounts, you know, their domain has been active for at least 60 days. I usually recommend at least you want to buy a domain and make sure your domain's been active for 60 days so that it's it's showing, hey, this, this is an actual credible domain, right? This is very important. This is a very important thing that I want you to have. Inbox and domain warm up. That's very important. You can look it up. Uh, if you want me to talk about it, obviously just leave comments. I'll go ahead and cover it. Uh, this also helps prevent your emails from going to spam by showing the email box providers. That's what I covered. Um, tools like Mailshake, uh, Instantly.ai, Optics.io, good tools. I personally have not used Mailshake. I've used Optics, but Optics is more very techy. It's very, very techy and a lot of like stuff. Instantly.ai, very simple, very easy. Uh, we have probably 120, 130 domains that we send out to. So we're able to, we have 300 inboxes. So we're able to send out 9,000 emails um, if I so choose to. Uh, but we usually, we're capping out right now at about 2,000 just because um, just the, like what ends up happening is we, we, we book way too many appointments and then the sales team complains. All right. And, and that's the thing is, I'm like, why are you guys complaining? So we use instantly because the way the way I do it is pretty simple is we send out the emails, uh, 1,500, 2,000 on a day. People respond. I have my VA go in, make a personalized video or just respond to it. You respond back to those, e those inboxes and then say, hey, are you interested in booking an appointment? They respond. Yes, they book an appointment with a with the salesperson. The salesperson closes the deal and then we all just retain the customer. Um, that's one tool you can try. Uh, then you also need a spam old filter. You can Google that. So spam old filters, uh, basically think about it like whenever you call the email, you don't want to use words like free, get, call, uh, per day. Those are there. There are specific words that when your email is scanned, it's like oh, this is a promotional, and then those promotional emails push you to the um, the promo tab. All right, because first off, warming up your domain keeps you from going to the spam tab. Okay keeps from going to the spam tab. And then the content of your email prevents you from going to the promotion tab. So you need to avoid two tabs, spam, promotion, right? You want to go into the primary inbox because if you don't, your email's online in the primary inbox, nobody books appointments with you, nobody buys from you, and you end up pretty much, you know, going out of business. So you want to avoid the spam words, spam words, so this way you don't end up going into the uh, promotions tab. Then once your inbox has been warmed up for a minimum of three weeks, I'm going to say it again, minimum of three weeks, okay, which means the AI tools have spoken to each other for a minimum of three weeks. Uh, note, maximum of three inboxes per domain. You can get as many inboxes as you want per domain. Uh, like, for instance, our main domain, all our employees get their own personal email, uh, their own company email. But for the cold email domains, we only book three. We only have three inboxes, and I have uh, one of my um, – um, I actually have two, three people that help me manage the cold email side of things. We have the, the lead cold email specialist, and then we have everyone else. Um, that's that. Also, ensure you set up a custom domain tracking. So always use a custom domain. What is a custom domain? A custom domain is, for instance, uh, let's say your, e your email is ABC. Your domain is www.abc.com, right? So whenever you see... Um, custom.abc.com. So anything that comes before the period, and then the domain, that is called a subdomain, right? You need the subdomain to set up your custom domain tracking, right? Uh, what this means is basically you can be able to track the filters, uh, track the open rates, and um, you can use your custom domain to warm up your main domain. More on that in a different video, okay? Now, ensure you set up your SPF, DKIM, DMARC, and domain forwarding. SPF, DKIM, DMARC is just things to basically show that your email is a credible email. And also you get reports from DMARC reports. Uh, I believe it's DMARC, DKIM reports of, um, you know, your reputation and stuff that's going out. And domain forwarding, as you have to understand, is when you send an email out, people will look at where the email comes from. And if it's a domain that says abc.com, they will put you in and Google you, right? So what you have to do is you have to set up domain forwarding that forwards your, your sending domains your cold email domains to your main domains, right? So this way, whenever they Google you, they land on your main website. When they land on your main website, they can go ahead and do business with you, right? Then start sending emails out and slowly ramp up to about 1,000 to 15,000 per day. It took us about two months to get to 1,000 to 1,500 per day. Uh, this all depends on the size of your list, right? If you have a huge list of 40,000, then absolutely do. We have a list of probably about 1.9 million. So obviously we can email as much as we want, but 
So as far as measuring success, I don't track open rates. Absolutely not. I recommend tracking reply rates, right? So um, an average, there, there's different industry standards out there. So this is not set in stone. But reply rates of about 3% are better in, in, in my personal opinion. So 3% means if I send out 1,000 emails, um, you know, 30 would respond. So if I send out 1,000 and 30 responds, usually about 25 to 30% of those are going to be not interested, leave me alone, blah, 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 and, or unsubscribing. And then you get about, so that's about nine people that will unsubscribe. And then you get about 21, usually that are interested, 20, 21, usually ends up being, you know, 70, 30, or 50, 50 of the 3%. And that's where you get your interested prospects. And usually out of the 30, maybe about five will, five to 10 will book, actually book an appointment and show up. And you probably close two, two to three. Right. So out of a thousand emails, you probably close three point point zero three percent, um, which honestly is not bad numbers to me, because if you do that on a consistent basis in about and you book in, you know, closing three per day in a week, you have 15, you know, five day work week, you know, you can be closing 50 deals a month. Right. To solve that. So also just ensure in your emails do not include links, images or any HTML. Do not put in HTML, do not put in links, do not put in images, only link. That should be in there in your email is the unsubscribe link. You must legally give people the ability to unsubscribe. Unsubscribe links must be in your emails. Okay. So I'm going to stretch that. Give people the ability to opt out. Okay. Uh, once you get a positive reply, then you can send links to articles. So once people reply, so out of the 3% that reply to you, now you can email about your business, what you do, and all the fancy stuff that you want to include in there. Right. Uh, tools you can use for personalized videos. You can use Loom or you can use Potion. Um, more on that later. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Enjoy, guys, and listen. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Like I said, this is where business meets marketing, so I'm going to be sharing with you. If you want to make money, if you're serious about making money, I'll be sharing with you tools for how you can do that, how you can grow your business, how you can make your money. It doesn't matter if you're in software. It doesn't matter if you are an insurance agent. It doesn't matter what it is that you're doing. I'm going to share with you nuggets, cold email, talk to you about ad copy, how to write ad copies. Google ads, Facebook ads, different templates to use. I'm going to share with you tools for you to take yourself from at least, a, because my goal for everyone watching this channel is to be at six figures a year. That's my goal is to take you from zero to six figures a year. And then obviously, if you want to proceed further to seven figures, then 100% we'll do that. But at least at a bare minimum, my goal is to take you from zero to six, keyword, six figures. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have for you guys. So just do me a favor, hit the like, subscribe button. And if, you, if you're serious about making money, then this is the channel that you want to be at. Uh, for that, I say enjoy.